Okay, okay. Uh, hi everybody, welcome back. Please feel free to turn on your videos. And uh, yeah, so first of all, the first homework has been graded. Has been graded. Solutions are solutions are on gray on CCLE in the homeworks section. So yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me or David know about the grades or about the solutions. And uh, the second homework, the second homework is due in is due this Friday, in two days from now. Okay. Now, uh, so let me. Today I'm gonna finally count the Stirling numbers of the second kind. So. Uh, as a reminder, as a reminder, we uh, we are studying set partitions. A1, A2, AK is a set partition partition of bracket n into k blocks. If these sets are disjoint uh, and Pairwise, yeah, any two sets are disjoint, and the union is the whole bracket n. So, and s of n comma k is the number, the number of of such partitions into k blocks. So, yeah, the goal of today today's lecture is to is to find some sort of nice formula in uh, last lecture and before that we did recurrence relations which in principle allow you to find s of n comma k but I guess I'm gonna just give you a faster algorithm or like a more beautiful formula so yeah how do we how do you how do you find this number and the the first step we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to formulate uh, we are going to try to formulate this number in terms of so instead of talking about set partitions, I want to talk about bijections or injections or subject subjections, uh, some kind of objects like this. So the first question is, uh, what is this number in terms of uh, injections, surjections? Bijections Any ideas? Uh, well, uh, I want to say that this is maybe the number of some injections from a set of size n to a set of size k multiplied by some, yeah, something like this. Uh, express this number s and k in terms of the number of some sorts of maps in some way.
any function with k equivalence class or something like that. Uh, okay, function with k equivalence class. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's pretty close, I would say. So it's, it is sort of true that uh, these partitions into k blocks, they count some kind of uh, equivalence relations on bracket n with k equivalence classes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's correct. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, so how to express these equivalence classes, let's say, in terms of uh, so subjections from bracket n to bracket k. Uh, yes, thank you, that is, that is almost, correct. so, okay, so the, that is, well, that's the, the right-hand side is correct, is the number of surjections, surjections from bracket n to bracket k. Right? Because if you, if you give me a surjection from bracket n to bracket k, that means that uh, if I, basically I, I kind of, you have the, you have a set partition, it assigns to, to each element of bracket n, it assigns a block, right? A block is some set, oops, a2, uh, yeah, and each block has to be non-empty, right? So, in a sense, you can, if i, if i belongs to a2, then you can sort of map i to 2, and that's going to be, so yeah, basically you can if you if if you give me a surjection, I can give you a set partition by just looking at uh, each block being the uh, the set of elements for each i, the set of for each j, the set of elements in in here that map to j. Although yeah, so this is almost S and K, except that I do need to divide by K factorial. Yes, right. So if you yeah, well basically. If I divide this number by k factorial, then I get s of n comma k. So that's the that's the claim. So it's uh, yeah. So just uh, just to uh, just to write down the proof, and also I'm going to use it to introduce some new terminology for us. Uh, yeah. So the what is a surjection? First of all. Previously, we've been mostly dealing with bijections and injections, so a surjection, and let me try to state it in a, in a new kind of language. So, uh, by definition, a map f from bracket n to bracket k is a surjection if and only if for each for each j in bracket k. What I previously used to say is that some element of bracket n maps to j. But what I want to say now is that uh, the pre-image, so I want to introduce the pre-image uh, of j, right, which is denoted by f inverse, so it's, I, usually you would write f inverse for a, if you have a bijection, then its inverse map is denoted f inverse. But uh, for an arbitrary map, and that's like standard mathematical notation, for an arbitrary map, the preimage of an element uh, j is just given by the set of all i in the domain such that f of i is equal to j. So you have your bracket k, you have some element j, and then you look at all elements which map to j, and that's uh, f inverse of j, which may be empty if if nothing maps to j, but uh, so if the preimage of of each j uh, is non-empty for each j, right? And uh, and so in particular. Yeah, but let me move this. In particular, if if you give me given a surjection f from bracket n to bracket k, you can consider the 
for images of one, f inverse of two, etc., f inverse of k, and this gives you is a set partition of bracket n into exactly k blocks. And of course, if you permute the, if you kind of in the, uh, if you swap one and two in the pre in the images, then the partition is going to be the same. So you have to divide by, you have to divide by k factorial. So in other words, uh, this this uh, describes a k factorial to one map from surjections to set partitions into k blocks. Yeah. So, uh, so in other words, if we know how to count surjections, then we know how to count s and how to count set partitions. So the game is, uh, the, the main question is, which kind of still remains, is how to count surjections from bracket n to bracket k. And that is actually tricky. So for that we need a new principle, which may be old to some of you, and it's called the inclusion-exclusion inclusion-exclusion principle. Which, by the way, uh, any yeah, let me ask, let me pause right now. Any questions so far? Okay. Then, uh, so what is the inclusion-exclusion principle? Well, the, the most familiar to you uh, is, I guess, if you want to count the intersection, the size of the union of A and B. So A and B are a and B are just two finite, finite sets. Then the size of the union is, well, the size of A plus the size of B minus the size of the intersection. So this is almost like the addition principle, except that now you allow the two sets to intersect. And the typical picture you would draw is, you have A here, you have B here, and then you have some intersection A intersect B. And so you kind of count A, and then you count B, and then you subtract whatever you have counted twice. Now, uh, if, you, if you want to, to find, to do the same for three sets, oops, C, then it's also uh, probably familiar to you, right? You have you draw a picture like this, A, B, C, and then so if you, you take the size of A plus the size of B plus the size of C, then you overcount, so you have to subtract A intersect B minus A intersect C minus B intersect C, but then you over subtracted, right? so you subtract this and this and this, so you uh, so so this piece in the middle, the the triple intersection is counted zero times. I have counted it three times here, and then I have subtracted it three times here. So I have to add an extra piece, which is the intersection of all three. Is that familiar, or is it completely, completely new idea? All right. Uh, yeah. So the question is, how do, you, how do you do this in general? So the, you want to kind of generalize this idea of uh, taking. I guess you have to take these alternating sounds, but in general, they they're going to come with uh, sort of. Uh, yeah, anyways, it's pretty much a direct generalization, so let me, I, I can just uh, write down the theorem, which is, uh, which is over here. So, uh, theorem, yes, yeah, so that's the inclusion, 
inclusion, exclusion, exclusion principle. It tells you that whenever for any for any for any uh, finite finite sets a1, a2, all the way up to a n. If you want to count the size of the union a1, uh, the size of the union of these sets, then the answer is going to be the sum over so over for j from 1 up to n. So j is the number of sets you in, in your intersection. So here j is equal to 1, here j is equal to 2, here j is equal to 3. And then you, uh, so there is a sign here, right? So the sign is negative whenever j is even, negative 1 to the j minus 1 times, and then you take the sum, basically you, you look at all k, you, you look at all j tuples of sets. So I'm going to write it as 1 less than or equal to i1, less than or equal to etc, less than or equal to i j less than or equal to n, the size of the intersection of a i1, intersect a i2, etc, intersect a i j. Right. So, for n equals to 2, we get this formula, for n equals to 3, we get the next formula, and etc. So, the it's a sum of basically or something like a power of two terms. But I mean, uh, you can't really, you can't just say, okay, it's true because we looked at examples for n equals to two and three. You have to actually prove it. And in general, this picture uh, with more sets is going to be more complicated. So you have to actually, you have to actually provide a rigorous argument. And that's, I guess maybe that's clear or not clear, but it, it relies on our knowledge of binomial coefficients. So let me write down a proof. Uh, and the, so the idea is, though, the idea is the same, right? You, you want to count every element, every element exactly once, right? So an element in the triple intersection is counted uh, once here, and then it's subtracted once here, and then it's counted once here again. So for each element, you have to prove that it's counted exactly once. So suppose you have some element. Suppose that x, which belongs to, let's say, suppose that x belongs to the union, a1, a2, union, etc., union, a, n. And suppose further that uh, it belongs to exactly k ai's. Right. So then, uh, I want to I want to find the contribution of x to the right hand side, which uh, so the question is, which intersections like this contain x? And the answer depends on j. Right. So for for each j x belongs to the intersection, x belongs to exactly how many? Well, you have to, out of, of, out of the k AIs which contain x, you have to pick j, j sets. You have to, because the intersection has to contain x, so each of these sets has to contain x. And there is j sets out of k possible sets which contain j. So the x belongs to exactly uh, k choose j terms in the right hand side. So you take an alternating sum over j from 1 up to n, and then, uh, so yeah, in other words, the contribution, contribution of x to the right hand side is given by the sum over j from 1 up to n of negative 1 to the j times, and this sum here 
just gives you k choose j. Sorry, j has to be j minus 1. So, again, and then the question is, the question is, what is this sum? And the, I guess, it's, it's very similar to your homework problems, or it's just, it's just an application of the binomial theorem, right? First of all, first of all, instead of uh, summing all the way up to n, I can sum all the way up to k, right? Because if j is bigger than k, then uh, there is going to be no contribution, and the result is uh, basically is equal to one by the binomial theorem. Right. Uh, I mean, you can you write one plus negative one, negative one to the k is equal to a bunch of terms, and all terms except one are gonna are gonna appear here, and the and the re the remaining one is gonna be this extra one. So yeah. that's the application of the binomial theorem I'm referring to, and that's it. Right. So each, I have shown that each x which belongs to the union contributes exactly one total to the right-hand side. And that's, uh, and therefore, I have counted each element of the union exactly once. Any, any questions on the proof? Okay, yeah. So, so no questions. That's the the inclusion exclusion principle is again each principle is pretty fundamental and kind of simple, but uh, you always uh, you always have the applications which are which are sort of tricky. So, and one application is going to be that I'm going to try to count these surjections. So, question is uh, how is how is this inclusion-exclusion principle relevant to the problem of counting surjections from bracket A to bracket N to bracket K? Um, yeah. So, back to surjections. And I guess, yeah, this is, if you don't, if you haven't seen this before, then I think it's not exactly Clear. So, but let me let me first state the theorem. Now, uh, I'm going to use the inclusion-exclusion principle to prove the following result. The number of surjections from bracket n to bracket k is equal is given by uh, the following summation. So it's it's unlike binomial coefficients, it's not just a product formula, but it's some summation for j from zero to k negative one to the j, k choose j times k minus j to the n. So yeah, that's the that is the formula. So you. Instead of summing from, for j from 1 up to n, I sum for j from 0 to, well, k in this case. Right. So, and this formula suggests that I have to have k, I have to find a union of k different, k different sets. So, proof. The proof is going to start like this. Let a1, a2, all the way up to ak, be... Uh, given by now I have to make a choice so uh, does anybody have any idea what should what should they uh, what should be a1 a2 up to ak
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually... Uh, yeah, that's correct. I mean, you don't mean surjections, you mean just maps. Uh, okay. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's true. All right, so the given by, so each AI is just uh, the number of maps, just number of all maps, F from bracket N to bracket K, such that, uh, such that the pre-image of, of I is empty. So instead of counting uh, things that go good, I, I'm going to count thing, how things can go bad. And things go bad precisely when one of the pre-images is empty. So, so then by the, by the subtraction, subtraction principle, we have s of n comma k is, uh, well, First of all, you have to take the total number of maps, and then you have to subtract the union of these AIs. And the total number of maps is something like uh, k to the n, k to the n minus the size of the union a1, a2, all the way up to a k. So this is k to the n is the number of all maps from bracket n to bracket k. With, with any without any restrictions and then I subtract the union which corresponds to uh, these are this is the number of non surjective maps from n bracket n to bracket k because to not be a subjection you have to belong to at least one of these AIs Uh, S of n comma k as in the serial number. Uh, wait, hold on. Where is... Oh, okay. Uh, S... Right, so when, when I write S of... Uh, when I write S of n comma k, then S stands for sterling. Yeah. Not for surjections. Okay, uh, yeah. So, so I need to count. I need to count the size of the union of these sets. And, okay, and that's that's where I would apply the inclusion-exclusion principle. So, the union a one, a two, all the way up to a k. Just by uh, by this theorem here. So what, what do I need to do? I need to take the sum for j from 1 up to n, negative 1, to the j minus 1, times the uh, times this extra sum, sum here. Right, so how do... Well, let me just write it down. The sum over i1, ij, the intersection of a i1, a i j. So I need to count the size of such intersection. The size of A, I1. Well, uh, hold on. What is... I think, I'm, uh, I think I made a mistake. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I think... So in this summation, the inequalities have to be strict. I1 should be strictly less than I2, and etc. Because these sets have to be, have to be different sets. So this is this is correct. And similarly here I have to I have to sum over I1 less than I2 less than etc. less than I J. So uh, AI1 intersect AI2, etc. intersect AIJ. So what is this number? It counts maps which uh, such that there is kind of there is j different elements, all of whose pre-images have to be empty. What about the factorial then? Wasn't there a k factorial to one thing between subjective maps and s of n comma k? Wait, hold on. Uh, people are telling me I'm missing the k factorial. But uh, am I? Uh, 
I think I'm good, right? I, I'm counting. This theorem is about surjections. That's the, uh, this is this number is not s of n comma k. Where in the proof? Whoops. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Okay. That that is true. Uh, thank you. Uh, k factorial times s of n. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I meant was the answer to our problem. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Thanks. All right. So, so what is the size of this set? The size of such an intersection. Yeah, that's that is correct. The answer is thank you. Uh, k minus j to the nth power, which is just uh, which is just uh, equal to the equal to the number of all maps from bracket n to bracket k uh, without uh, i one, i two, all the way up to all the way up to i j, right? So just count maps into a k minus j element set. So that's the number of such maps. And in particular, it does not depend on the on the choice of i one, i two, up to i j. So there is. Uh, I can now. I can now compute this summation on the right hand side and it's going to be so the number of terms is going to be n choose j or k choose j k choose j and then each term is going to is going to be of each intersection individual intersection is going to be of size k minus j to the n i think that's uh, yeah i think that's supposed to be correct okay and so uh so this is almost this is almost the answer right here. The difference between this expression and the answer is, first of all, here the summation is from j equals to one, and the answer the summation is from j equals to zero. And that's one difference. And the other one is that I have here I have negative one to the j, and here I have negative one to the j minus one. But that's exactly that's exactly because of because of the extra. I have to take k to the n minus the size of this intersection. So the answer, which is the number of sub surjections, is given by k to the n minus the size of this intersection, this union, oops, a k, which is if you if you look at the sum, the j equals to zero term corresponds to k to zero, which is just one times k to the n. So, in other words, this this one is equal to negative one to the j times k choose j times k minus k minus j to the n for j when j is zero. So that's kind of a very neat coincidence that the uh, the sum has, still has the same form. You just have to include j equals to zero. Uh, negative 1 to the j minus 1 times k choose j uh, times k minus j whoops negative 1 to the j k minus j to the n that's yeah so I have changed the the power of negative 1 because I have to subtract and that's it that's the that's the proof any any questions? on this proof.
All right. And, and now the, of course, as you already pointed out to me, if I divide by k factorial, I get a formula for s of n comma k, which is 1 over k factorial times the sum for j from 0 to k. I do 1 to the j, k choose j, k minus j to the n. So maybe, which, okay, so... In general, when you get such a formula, you, you kind of wonder, is there a simpler formula, or is this the best we can do? And I guess this is the, this is the basically the best we can do. I mean, it can be computed very fast, because you can compute binomial coefficients very fast, so it's kind of linear time. And if you compare it to some other formulas we had in class, like recursive, or the formula with the all possible increasing products, then those have higher computational complexity, I guess. But this is just linear time. And yeah, maybe to demonstrate the power, let, let's see if I can compute some example. Maybe S of, should I try 6 comma 3? It's 1 over 3 factorial times, okay, I have to take j equals to 0, 1, 2, and 3. So for j equals to 0, I take, I get 3 to the, okay, this is going to be a giant, wait, why is it? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do 6, 3. Let's try 5, 5, 3. Uh, 3 to the 5th minus, so I, I have to use these binomial coefficients here, right, which is k choose j uh, minus uh, 3 choose 1 times uh, 2 to the 5th plus 3 choose 2 times 1 to the 5th minus 3 choose 3 times, uh, yeah, I guess the last term is 0 anyway, so, uh, okay, so let's see what happens. I have no idea what's going to what's gonna happen, but uh, 3 to the 5th is like 243 minus uh, 3 times 32, okay, 96 plus 3 minus 0, okay. Okay, let's see what the answer is and, and then observe whether it's correct or... So I'm taking S5, 3. Wait, what? No, that's completely off. Oh, maybe maybe that's right. Okay, so S5, 3 is, is equal to 25. Is that, is that right? Is that equal to... Uh, okay, yeah, because it's 1. It's 150 divided by 6, that's 25. Okay, nice. Yeah, so you see the formula works, and I, uh, instead of listing all these 25, I mean, I, I guess I could have computed using the recurrence here also. Not, it wouldn't take much longer. But if you have a computer, then it's gonna, this is going to be very fast. But even by hand, it's also all right. Anyways, uh, that's the... That's the Stirling numbers of the second kind. And you see that, yeah, so far this is pretty advanced compared to all the other things we tried before. And I will also want to show you some other application of the inclusion-exclusion principle, which I think is pretty nice. So, uh, and that's, I'm going to use it to count derangement, derangements. So how do, what are, what is a derangement? A derangement is a, so a permutation permutation is a derangement if uh, f of i is not equal to i for all i. So you can you can try to think of real life applications of this notion. There's about yeah, there's applications about like some person who has to give out people's hats and then you have to not give 
the person's head to the person and or some crazy lady which takes up a random place on a bus and then everybody has to, has to take different places. Anyways, there is there's all kinds of objects which correspond to derangements in real life, which I am, yeah. But to me, these are just going to be bijections satisfying this mathematical condition. And so the question is, uh, the question is how many derangements are there? Uh, so let's, let's say, let's say, uh, say d of n, uh, let be the number of derangements and the question is uh, how do you find how do you find this number and again the formula is not going to be very easy but it's going to be easy to find using the uh, the same ideas as pre as before so you Here is a proposition, which is that the number of derangements is n factorial times some alternating sum, j from 0 up to n, negative 1 to the j times 1 over j factorial. Which, yeah, is, if you if you can you can compare it to the formula here, right? It's it's very similar. You still have an alternating summation of some combinatorial stuff. In the middle. So how do you prove how do you prove that such a theorem? Well, you use the inclusion-exclusion principle. But what are what are going to be these sets? Uh, so let a one, a two, all the way up to a n be given by. Can somebody guess? Functions for which f of i is equal to. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Ai is the set of permutations. So let me use this sign here for permutations such that f of i is equal to i. So each of these counts non derangements. And then, uh, okay, so now I want to apply the inclusion exclusion principle. So I can compute all these. If I if you give me uh, a i one intersect a i two intersect etc intersect a i j, then the size of such an intersection is going to be you count all permutations which kind of fix i one i two etc up to i j are the fixed points of your are among the fixed points of your permutation. So in other words, you just count bijections from n minus j to n minus j. So that's n minus j factorial. So let me write it down. It's the number of permutations of the set bracket n without i1, i2, etc., i, j. So these, are, these numbers have to be fixed. Okay, and now I can uh, now I can compute the union a one, a two, etc. Union a n using the inclusion exclusion principle. It's the sum for j from one up to n negative one to the j minus one times uh, times what? I have to I have to take such intersections. Each of them has size n minus j to the n minus j factorial, and then there is there is n choose j. In the summation, there is n choose j terms. So I have to take n choose j terms times n minus j factorial, which you can simplify. This is equal to n factorial, j factorial, n minus j factorial times n minus j factorial. So it cancels out. And the result is just, so the result is given by uh, sum from j up to 1, from 1 up to n, negative 1 to the j minus 1, uh, times n factorial divided by j factorial. You can, 
you can even put n factorial out of the brackets and then the out of the summation and the answer which is the number of derangements is given by n factorial minus this a1 union a n so and that again corresponds to the j equals to zero term n factorial times the sum for j from zero to n negative one to the j divided by j factorial and uh, so it's so exactly the same idea, but you count you count different things with it. And yeah, so in, in general, inclusion exclusion is a pretty popular tool. If you ever want to count something, then it's usually, especially when when your number satisfies some sort of recurrence relation, it's usually useful to find a proof like this. But one curious corollary that I'd like to mention is that. So in this class, I don't really talk much about asymptotics, even though it's a very interesting. Whenever you have some family of objects, you can ask what is the asymptotics of the number of such objects as n goes to infinity. And so that's outside of the scope of this class. But in this case, this is this formula is very suggestive. So let me, let me try to copy the formula. If you, if you look at this formula, when n is very large, then the thing here is, is it, it's almost, it's the sum of inverses of uh, factorials with signs. So uh, corollary is that uh, the limit as n goes to infinity, d of n divided by n factorial is equal to is equal to what? One over e. Yeah, that that is correct. One over e, uh, which is one over e is the sum. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's the sum j from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the j over j factorial, because that's the formula for the exponential. I mean, that's the formula for the exponential of x, where x is equal to negative 1. So, uh, so that's kind of nice. Right? It tells you that the, what is this ratio? This ratio here is the, is the probability, probability that a uniformly random permutation is a derangement. And that probability tends to 1 over e. Yeah, so I think this is a good time to stop. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, then I will see you all on Friday. Thanks.